Tiny Tim was anything but tiny. This guy was known for his signature falsetto voice. He had a rough start in life and in the music business, but soon everyone was singing along to tiptoe through the tulips. I'm Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember, and my mother always told me to stay out of her flower garden. So Tiny Tim's advice is not for everyone. Tiny Tim's real name was Herbert Kari, but that wasn't a very catchy stage name. Herbert was born on April 12, 1932, and took an early interest in music. Corey was given an old wind-up phonograph machine, but he only owned one record which he listened to for hours at a time and over and over. That record was Beautiful Ohio by Henry Burr. And if you're familiar with Tiny Tim's career, you'll certainly recognize this strong influence. Most notably in the 60s, Tiny Tim frequently played Henry Burr songs on programs like The Johnny Carson Show. And the young music fanatic slowly began acquiring new records for his collection and subsequently expanding his musical taste. By the time he was six, he had taught himself how to play the guitar and he began writing his own melodies. As a boy, he was a loner by nature, spending all his free time at the New York Public Library. There he would make photocopies of sheet music, which he would take home and memorize how to play. This was a hobby that he'd continue for the rest of his life. By the time Corey was 11, he had taught himself how to play more than just the guitar. Now he could play the violin, the mandolin, and of course the ukulele. His obsession with the ukulele was sparked when he saw Arthur Godfrey playing one on the early 50s show Arthur Godfrey and His Friends. Corey never actually finished high school, dropping out when he was a sophomore. He began working odd jobs to get by, and his other obsessions included the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team and the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team. And I was so thrilled to get this Toronto Maple Leafs sweater because the Leafs have all been my favorite hockey club for years. When Herbert was young, he had a routine appendectomy and spent his recovery time listening to music and reading his Bible. While recovering, he discovered that he could sing in a very high pitch and one that he thought sounded really good. If you walk into a club and you have something different, and the crowd stops and listens. The aha moment came when he was singing along to a Rudy Valley song and realized that he could match the notes. He once told Johnny Carson that the day he discovered this talent was like a religious experience for him. And that's similar to my own experience. When I strain to hit those high notes, sometimes popping a blood vessel, it's a religious moment too. Mostly because people are praying that I'll stop. But back to Tiny Tim. The early days. Herbert began working as a runner boy at the New York office of MGM in 1952, and this is where he fell in love with the entertainment industry. He was inspired by the talent surrounding him, so one day he decided to enter an open mic competition. He belted out the famous classic You Are My Sunshine in his falsetto style, and the crowd loved him. Encouraged by the warm reception at that open mic, which has not been my experience by the way, Kari began traveling around to other nightclubs and performing on rookie nights, employing a range of stage names. Some of those monikers included Judas K. Foxglove, Emmett Swink, and Texarkana Tex. In addition to his falsetto voice, Kari would wear these brightly colored outfits or wildly printed fabrics. You really couldn't miss them. He also grew his hair really long and would wear stage makeup to appear paler than he actually was. His performances were definitely memorable. And perhaps surprisingly, the women in the audience were drawn to this rather androgynous creature. His mother thought he had lost his mind and was fixing to commit him to the psychiatric care. His mother thought that he should go down to Bellevue to the psychiatric unit down there for an evaluation. But his father stepped in and deterred her plans to make Kari into the next McMurphy from Cuckoo's Nest. Things begin looking up. By 1959, he had a steady gig at Hubert's Museum and Live Flea Circus in Times Square. But this was a freak show of sorts, and he was kind of a sideshow act. 
but it was all meant to be as one of these shows had a talent scout in the audience. And that scout helped him land auditions at venues in Greenwich Village in New York City. His first paying job was at Page 3. He was using two stage names at this point, Derry Dover and Sir Timothy Timms. He only made 96 bucks a month for playing five to six hours nearly every night. God bless Tiny Tim. In 1963, it was finally time for Kari to stop switching up his stage name. And with the help of his manager, they landed on Tiny Tim, partly influenced by Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. God bless us, everyone. As well as being a shorter version of his Sir Timothy Tim's, sometimes humorously promoted as America's answer to the Beatles. Tiny Tim was beginning to grow a fan base in New York City. He became a fixture at the popular New York club called The Scene, where he opened for members of the Love and Spoonful, The Blues Project, and even Jimi Hendrix, who was apparently quite charmed by him. Tiny Tim was immersed in the world of drugs, but was opposed to taking them himself. He just didn't mind the people who did the drugs. Along with Hendrix, Bob Dylan was reportedly a fan, once attending a show of his, where Tiny Tim serenaded him with a Tiny Tim rendition of Dylan's Positively Fourth Street. Dylan even invited Tiny up to his house in Woodstock for a few days to be part of an indie film that he was making, but unfortunately it was never released. My time is your time. Your time is my time. Not so tiny anymore. In 1967, after a gig at the scene, Tiny Tim was signed to Reprise Records and plans were made to fly him to LA to record on the label. Tiny released his first album with Reprise in 1968 titled God Bless Tiny Tim, a very whimsical record that featured many songs that you may remember to this day. Soon, he released a second album with a very unique name, Tiny Tim's Second Album, which was also released in 68 but was a commercial flop. Also in January of 68, Tiny Tim appeared in the series debut of the sketch comedy program Rowan and Martin's Laughin', where in response to Tiny's falsetto and ukulele rendition of On the Good Ship Lollipop, Dan Rowan remarks, quote, Kept him out of the service. <laughs> to which Dick Martin retorts, oh, I'll bet the army burned his draft card, huh? <laughs> It was a fun performance with Martin constantly faking beginning applause, ready for the show to be over. Then in Laffin's third episode just a few days later, one that happened to be Goldie Hawn's debut, Tiny Tim returned performing his iconic Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Tiny has added a bit of choreography to his usual presentation. There is nothing usual about Tiny Tim's presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and this grabbed the nation's attention, as well as the nation's voice, which at the time were both Johnny Carson and Ed Sullivan, both of whom would go on to book Tiny Tim for their shows. Tiny Tim saw some success with his fourth album, titled For All My Little Friends in 1969, compiled of children's songs for which he earned a Grammy nomination, although yet again it didn't sell well, and he was also frequenting many of the big music festivals, including in 1970 being sandwiched between between Miles Davis and Joni Mitchell before a crowd of over 600,000 at the famous Isle of Wight Music Festival in England, where he was quite popular over there. We can depend on you. Unfortunately though, his popularity was waning as the 60s came to a close. One of his most publicized performances wasn't musically based. In December of 1969, the 37-year-old performer married the 17-year-old Miss Vicky in a ceremony broadcast live on The Tonight Show with Carson, which would be one of the highest rated TV programs ever. Jazz performer Nick Lucas even sang his famous version of Tiptoe Through the Tulips for the bride and groom. I'm tiptoe through the tulips with me. But Reprise didn't renew their contract, so he and his wife, Miss Vicky, founded their own label called Victim. But their relationship ended in divorce in 1974. Tiny Tim would be married on two other occasions. The end is near. Tiny Tim made a bit of a comeback in the 80s and 90s. He appeared in a film. Marvelous Mervo at your service. 
released two new albums, and performed with the indie rock band Camper Van Beethoven. But Tiny Tim had several underlying health conditions, diabetes, and other cardiovascular issues. Terribly, he suffered a heart attack on stage at the Ukulele Festival in Massachusetts. It was September 1996, and he was rushed to the hospital and spent several weeks recovering. His doctors told him that he shouldn't return to the stage because of his poor health, but he didn't listen. On November 30th, 1996, he told his wife, his third, named Susan Gardner, that he wasn't feeling well, but he chose to go play a show anyway. It was a gala benefit held by the women's clubs of Minneapolis, and he didn't want to let his fans down. Sadly, most of the audience had left by the end of his last song, and halfway through singing Tiptoe Through the Tulips, he suffered another major heart attack on stage. He never regained consciousness. Tiny Tim was declared dead and laid to rest at Lakewood Cemetery in Minneapolis. So, now it's your turn. Do you have a favorite song that Tiny Tim sang? Any of you out there attend a live gig that Tiny Tim strummed his ukulele at? Please get in the comments and let us know. We want to hear your memories. And if you enjoyed revisiting the life of Tiny Tim with us, consider clicking that thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a throwback. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks very much for watching.